Hi, I'm John. And I'm Lou. And this is the CVE of the week. And oh boy. All right. So we got a big CVE of the week. And as you know, the CVE of the week is our uh, episode where we talk about a common vulnerability and exposure entry and how you should uh, deal with it, mitigate it and all that. And many times we don't actually talk about CVEs. And today we're talking about a big security issue that's going on right now. And that may not directly impact you. Maybe it does, but we wanted to kind of riff on it and talk about it. And Lou, what we're talking about today is what's going on over at Ingram Micro. Absolutely. And Wow. So the article we're looking at here is from News Bites, which kind of aggregates a bunch of different stories together. But this is actually in every tech journal out there. So we saw it in TechCrunch. We saw it in a bunch of different places. They got hit last week. Uh, so uh, I saw it as early as June, July 3rd last week uh, by ransomware. Okay. And so, go ahead. so let's talk about what it did. Right. All right. So this ransomware hit was major. It And as John said, it, it started on July the 3rd. It took down Ingram Micro's website and ordering systems, including its XVantage AI platform and Impulse licensing provision system. So this is, if you are a commercial vendor selling as a distributor, this is getting kneecapped. This yeah. is incredibly, incredibly bad, right? And the, as of right now, we are still seeing on the company website Hi, we're still here. We're screwed. Okay, there, so yeah, there's still there problems. Um, and this is, uh, so the internal systems were taken offline quickly after detection. And Ingram Micro, who ironically sells a lot of cybersecurity, um, enlisted uh, experts in cybersecurity and they are uh, going with the investigation and they alert in law enforcement. So this is a really bold move. So let me let me break down what we think knows that we know what happened, and then we'll let, let's chat about it a little. the The challenge is it's thought that the attackers likely breached Ingram Micro via its Global Protect VPN gateway. Um, so that's not confirmed. That's just the current thinking. It's also thought that the um, that this attack actually was the actual own of these folks was launched much earlier. So uh, we're hearing rumors it was as far back as last November. Uh, John, were we able to substantiate that? No, I'll keep I'll keep researching and I'll I'll put a post up on this and uh, in the edit I'll I'll put something on there if I do confirm that. But I did see an article saying that something about. November, and, and that may have been where it started. It may have come before that, they're, but they're still investigating. Ingram Micro is scrambling right now, trying to figure out how to deal with it, what happened, how people got in. And that's the thing with, with ransomware. Sometimes the the whatever it is, the Trojan, whatever it is that infected them can sit there for years. And that is the 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 MO that they oh, use. Yeah. Is the, is that they'll go in and if the longer they sit, the the more vicious it is because if they can keep you infected and keep your backups infected and you think your backups are safe, then you say, well, I'll just restore to a backup from two years ago. Well, that backup from two years ago may still be infected. And then you you're hit again. So yeah. it this is this is really insidious. So one of the things that we're going to talk about in this session is better backup strategies, but that backup has to be clean. And if and if you're infected and you're backing up infected data, it's tough. And the thing is, is that I've I've I had a friend who worked for a publishing company that got impacted by ransomware and they just paid it. I mean, they did work with the FBI to try to find the guys, but they paid it because they were down. They were losing millions and millions of dollars because they, they weren't able to operate. And it was cheaper to just pay it. So than John, it was to, this to, one gets to, even to, more fun. Yeah. They're not only down, right? Which means not only are it's Ingram Micro losing money on this, but so is every one of the major vendors that they sell through. Right. So they've got that pressure. But the other thing is this group called SafePay <laughs> um, 
that made that did this hack claims to have stolen and encrypted sensitive data, including financial records, customer files, intellectual property, legal documents, personal data. So, and of they, course, as soon as Ingram Micro pays, they're going to delete all of that information. Oh yeah, you can trust criminals that do this all the time. They don't do anything with this data for their own good. Right. So now that we know this is bad, 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 all right? So the, the, not only is this bad for Ingram, but I am not going to be surprised because it's quarter end. I'm not going to be surprised if we see some major companies who have to restate their financials for this quarter because of this. That's how big a channel of this is. Let's talk mitigation, right? What if you're in this place? As John said, your backup strategy is crucial. It's utterly crucial, but there's another piece here that you might be missing. Segmentation is crucial. Yeah. So where did they violate the application becomes the question. Did they violate the database? Did they violate the application? Did they violate the front end? Where is the breakage? What you have to do is make sure that not only have you got backups, and not only are those backups encrypted, but those backups are separated. Your database is everything, because really the money shot in this piece right here, the thing that really hurts is those databases. Right. Because those are your transaction databases. To give you an idea of how bad this hurts, at a previous company I was at earlier in my career, a lab was doing multicast testing and managed to wipe out the external to internal link for the Kerberos server uh, for transactions, financial transactions on the website took it down for 12 hours. They wanted to shut down every single lab in the company because of that. And this was a networking company. And a couple of us got together and said, you can't do that because all labs will become shadow labs and then you're triply screwed. You cannot do this. So we came up with a new procedure. The point is, is that a lot of institutions don't know where all their applications are. Yeah, And this is getting worse in the cloud world not better. You don't assume, don't assume that your AWS and your Azure and your Rackspace or whoever else, Oracle, Oracle's becoming a big player, are talking to each other. You have to go check to make sure that everything is being backed up properly and segmented properly. Another thing, John, I'm going to bring up here. This is a textbook example for a zero trust network. 100%. Zero trust is, and we say that all the time. Zero trust, zero trust, zero trust. Zero trust. It, it, it's got to be because, I mean, it just, it, it, and again, that goes along with your segmentation. Get, get a fabric in place, hyper segment your network, zero trust. If something looks like a printer, it should only be allowing print traffic. If something looks like a phone, it should only be allowing SIP traffic. And it should be only allowing at a bit rate that looks like a phone traffic. If you've got a phone, something that looks like a phone and it's pushing megabits of data, there's something wrong, unless it's a video phone. So even you know, that, check to see what that traffic is. Exactly, exactly. The other thing that I'm gonna throw out there as an idea is, as part of your disaster recovery plan is a true disaster recovery plan. You have a, a complete, utter, no data recovery possible. What do you do? How do you restart your business when everything's down? Yeah. So, and, and not to, not to bring up really horrible memories, 9-11 happens, right? What do you do? I was working at EMC when that happened, and we were super proud that a lot of the companies in that building were back up and running in an hour because they were backing up across the the river in New Jersey, and they were able to to start running from those backups uh, within within literally an hour. But that was because Actually, that data that, that data was not uh, infected. Your right. biggest problem is how do you recreate the matrix of data? and transactions that is your business. So, and, and there's there's two sides to the data piece, right? So th there there is a fiduciary piece. You know, you have to be able to be able to report, especially as a public company, be able to report out your, your numbers and things like that. But you can always say, look, we had a disaster. We, we're gonna have trouble with those numbers. We can go back to physical ledgers or whatever it is, but we have to move the business forward. And you have to have a plan for, okay, maybe we have to, 
have people resubmit orders, start over from there, but we have to be able to get a new system up and running, do something. So you have to consider that. That has to be part of your plan and you have to have budget for it, even as if it's an emergency budget that you don't have access to, but have the CEO and CFO know, if this happens, you're gonna have to write a check. I don't need the check now, but you're gonna have to write a check in that case, be prepared for that. All of those contingencies have to be put in place. Let me recap this. Yeah, go ahead. Back up, back up, back up. And back up on an individual basis, not an aggregate basis, right? Make sure that you have a model that allows you to back up segments of your database and your application separately. Compartmentalize the living snot out of this thing. You must do this. And the last thing is, assume your internal network is hostile ground. That's yeah. exactly what happened here. We have an implicit bias within how we do things to say, oh, my network's safe. I've got a firewall. I've got antivirus. I've got this stuff. Didn't help these guys. So zero trust is something, if you're not already looking to implement it, you need to get on that. Go look at that because you don't want this to happen to you. So that's going to cover this episode. I want to give a shout out to friend of the show, Bob, who's the one that sent this article to me over the weekend. So I, we were able to follow it and see what was going on. Uh, so thank you, Bob. Uh, but we couldn't do this podcast without listeners like you and Bob. So feel free to send us tips like that or to send us what you think. Do you want us to hear more topics like this or want us to go back to more CVE style topics? Send email to feedback at itsparkcast.com or hit us up on X at itsparkcast. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can leave a comment down below. We read every bit of feedback that we get. And uh, if it's insightful enough, we'll read it out on our Friday news segments. So with that, we're gonna turn you back to your day. Be sure to hit like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Take care. See ya.